Hi, this is Angelica, I'm admissions officer for the online program. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, this afternoon, we're gonna be discussing the graduate programs in spatial analysis for public health. Um, so please stay tuned. We'll be starting um, the presentation in about five minutes. Um, just wanting to make sure that you're able to see the screen. Um, you should be able to see a screen at this point that shows uh, the beginning of a slideshow with my name and then the name of the director of the program. If you're having any issues, with any of the visual piece, please feel free to comment in and we'll see if we can help troubleshoot for you. Otherwise, stay tuned and we'll be starting in about five minutes. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us. It is now 1231. We're going to go ahead and start the presentation. 
Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon. This is a presentation that is focused on our graduate programs in spatial analysis for public health. Your presenters this afternoon are going to be Dr. Frank Ferriero, um, program director, lecturer, and faculty member Tim Shields, and myself, Angelica Santiago. I'm an admissions officer for the online program. Um, and I've had the pleasure of working with this program since it started. And we are now going into our third cohort now in the fall. Um, so we'll take some time now to let um, Frank and Tim introduce themselves to everyone. Thank you, Angelica. Uh, my name is Frank Curriero, everybody. I am um, happy to be here and, and take your questions today. I have been a faculty member at Johns Hopkins School of Public Health for um, about the last 18 years. I sit in the Department of Epidemiology, but I'm a formally trained statistician. So that's what my degree is in. And I focus in the area of spatial statistics, which, um, as you see, plays a big part in terms of spatial analysis. Um, especially for public health. So I'm um, excited to be here today and uh, hope we can clarify and answer a lot of your questions. Well, hello everybody. I am uh, Tim Shields. I'm an associate scientist in the Department of Epi here at Hopkins. Uh, I guess I've been teaching the GIS uh, with Frank, I guess, for over the last 15 years or so. I've been at Hopkins for about 20 years. Um, I guess the short thing about me, I've been able to focus uh, time applying GIS methods to public health applications. Um, I'm a geographer by training. And in my opinion, geography really takes on relevance once it's paired with another discipline. So combining it with uh, you know, spatial analysis applications and public health has uh, been real exciting. Um, so I guess that's about it for me. I'm just looking forward to uh, you know, working with uh, this, this new students in this program. Well, thank you so much for introducing yourselves. Um, let's go ahead and get it started. The next slide will be for everyone to see the curriculum for both our Master of Applied Science and Spatial Analysis for Public Health. And on the bottom, you can see details as far as the one-year graduate certificate. Um, at this time, I would encourage everyone just to go ahead into the chat box and start putting in any questions you have. Um, and of course, as we're going over some of these questions, you can continue adding them in as we'll kind of come back and forth to the chat box as questions are being answered. Um, but it looks like we have some active participants already. I do have a question that came up really quickly here. Um, the question is, what makes this program different from other GIS programs out there? Tim or... Uh I, I, I can take I, I can take a crack at that one easily. Um, there, so there are a lot of programs that are starting to pop up in 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 different universities and agencies. And um, one difference is is a lot of these other programs focus on a particular substantive area, whether it's um, environmental science, whether it's engineering, whether it's urban planning. Um, ours is is more general in terms of public health. But a, a bigger distinguishing feature between our program and what I have yet to see in any other program um, across the country is that our spatial analysis program includes a dedicated component in spatial statistics. And if you read the, if you went through the webinar um, already, then, then you understand what that means. It's, it's GIS, as everybody knows, it's this great software for for integrating databases and, and making maps, but there's a whole area about going beyond the map, and that's what spatial statistics provides us the tools to do. So we provide formal coursework and applications in, in spatial statistics, which really makes our program the most comprehensive out there, in my opinion. Um, Thank you. If, uh, the only thing I would kind of add to uh, Frank, it's, it's a, just a corollary to it, is, is the word applied, you know, the Masters of Applied Science. Um, the focus really is on applications of these new skills. So I think, as Frank mentioned, other programs out there teaching GIS and spatial statistics and other things, but it's, it's they just kind of give you the maybe the skills for that, and um, we have a big focus on on the, uh, the applications of. So while um, you're working through our program and our material um, it, it's immediately applicable to uh, the students own universe and what they're where they are in their in their world 
Perfect. Thank you for that explanation. Um, we did have another question that came up, just wanting to know a little bit more insight into the difference between the MAS and the certificate. Um, just wanting to know insight into the main differences uh, between the two and what kind of candidates would be the best candidates, especially for the certificate. Um, what would be an ideal candidate for their background to, to enter into the certificate or apply to the certificate? Sure. So I, I, I can take that one on. Um, so the certificate, I mean, you can look at the difference in the curriculum. And basically, um, if you're doing the certificate, we we need you to have prior experience in in biostatistics and epidemiology. And it could be, you know, a couple um, basic classes in epi epidemiology. And in terms of biostatistics, we're talking about um, getting up to regression analysis, um, linear logistic and Poisson regression. Um, outside of that, the, the the core spatial programs that you see listed in the um, certificate curriculum are the same exact courses that are in the master's curriculum. And actually, you will be in classes with um, students that are in the master's program and the certificate program together for the four primary core spatial classes. So in terms of the spatial content, there really is no difference. Perfect, thank you. Um, I think a question came in that I can help address, um, wanting to know more insight into the tuition for the programs as well as any funding opportunities for scholarships. Um, so in, in case you weren't able to review the, the full webinar, um, there is more specific details on there, but I do wanna share that the current tuition for the 2018-2019 school year is 1,128 per credit. There is a scholarship, a partial scholarship that is available for both the MAS as well as the certificate. And what that scholarship will do is take off about $433 off of each credit and students would be responsible for the remaining $695 per credit. And respectively, you'll see that the full MAS is 50 credits and that the certificate is 25 credits. Um, but if you needed more specific information on financial aid, that is um, on a case-by-case -case basis, and you can definitely feel free. My details are listed here on the screen, and if you want to speak more about your background and kind of additional details about that, um, feel free to reach out to me directly after the presentation, and I'll be happy to schedule some time so we can talk about that. Um, next, I think, um, Professor, Professor Fields, I think this would be a great question for you to go over. Um, there's questions about what GIS software is used and taught in the program, if there's one specific software utilized, um, or if there's going to be different softwares or different approaches for um, the GIS portion of the program. Sure. Well, currently we're using ArcGIS Desktop. Um, that's an ESRI product. Uh, we picked that just because it is you know, the leading industry standard. Um, it's the most popular one out there. Um, so therefore the most widely used with the um, just to point out you know I guess the the license you know, for a private license is something like fifteen hundred dollars but um, through Hopkins you get a student license so all the software costs will be you know covered for you um, that said you know the uh, the GIS classes is in ArcGIS um, but when we get into our second class the uh, spatial technologies spatial data technologies we uh, introduce a couple others, you know, we'll, we'll do an overview and do an exercise in quantum GIS, QGIS. We'll have um, an overview of other GIS softwares out there. Most, you know, the, the, um, the, the, how these softwares are operating, the principles are all about the same. If you know one, you, you can translate them to others. Um, and we'll go over ArcPro as well. And Joe, I'd like Thank to add you. a little bit that if I can because we've had questions in the past that that follow up with the the question on the software for GIS is what software is used for for spatial statistics and um, and while every products like ArcGIS and ArcPro offer some um, versions of actually analyzing the map data they are quite limited so um, we made a decision a while back and this goes for our on-site courses as well as our ours the as well as the MAS online programs is to switch to R. So R is a um, statistical computing language and um, R has ex 
a tremendous um, capabilities for doing spatial analysis. So, um, so you'll learn the GIS portions of stuff in, in ArcGIS, and then we'll switch to R and go back and forth with R and GIS to um, stati spatially statistically analyze the data. Perfect. And could either of you elaborate if students need specific background in, in either of these to be able to be eligible to apply to the, either the master's or the certificate? Are you expecting um, background already within ArcGIS and within um, R, or could you give share a little bit more details on that? No, there there is no prior prerequisites required for either the GIS software, the ArcGIS, the Arc Pro, or the QGIS, or the R statistical program environment. Instruction is provided and resources are provided um, for all of these softwares. Perfect, thank you. Um, question just came in that I think I'll be able to help answer. Um, a student's just wondering how long they are allowed uh, for program completion. For the full master's degree, students do have a maximum, it can be completed within two years. Um, the students have a maximum of four years to complete. And for the certificate, it can be completed in one year, and students have a maximum of three years to complete. Um, another great question that just came in was wondering if you could, for the full master's degree, if you can elaborate a little bit on the integrative activity um, as far as the culminating class in, in the program. Yeah, so this, this is another great selling point for the, for the master's of applied science and spatial analysis. So the integrative activity allows students to bring in their own data and their own project and um, and design and analyze that data as part of sort of this culminating experience. So as you can see, there is a, the last class in the program, one of the last classes is called integrative activity. And in that, in that course, students are working on analyzing their own data for their own project, whatever that may be. And we have a variety of, of various projects that have come in um, so far with, with the current cohort. And, um, and they actually work on pieces of that throughout the two years. So it's not just waiting until that, that uh, last term in the second year to work on the integrative activity. It's, um, it's actually worked on in, in pieces throughout the year in our um, spatial analysis lab classes. For the for the master's program, um, it's a culminating experience. So so the final project is a complete written up report of a spatial analysis of an original data set or project of your own, and um, and a lot of students have told us in the past that is a a an attractive quality of our program. Now just to say that it's not required. You don't need to bring in your own data or have your own project to be accepted into the program. We have. Uh, we have other projects that students can pick from if they don't have the opportunity um, or accessibility to bring in a project of their own with their own data. So it's quite flexible in that sense. Perfect, and I think we had a follow-up question to that as you were saying that. Um, what kind of data could possibly use and, and examples of how it's used to show disease spread if that's the route they decided to go? Um, can you can you repeat the first part of that question? I'm sorry, I may not have heard it. What kind of data is used, or what kind of data is needed for the integrative activity? It's you know we we getting students throughout that are the program. throughout the program. Yeah, so you know we give a variety of different types of of data. Some are um, infectious disease type data. You know, so these could be dots on a map where people have certain types of diseases. It could be what we call area level data. So it could be counts of disease aggregated to some aerial unit like census tracts or census blocks or villages. Um, it could be exposure data. So it could be air pollution data at monitored locations and, um, and things like that. So there's, there's a variety of different types of data and we categorize these different types of data. And actually the, the first course that Tim leads on GIS is a case study driven course. And um, there's three different case studies um, that denote the three different types of primary spatial data that we deal with in the program. And that being what's called geostatistical data, that's for more environmental exposure type data. 
um, point pattern data. So these are locations of events, for example, where people have certain types of diseases or where factories are located and so forth. And then the third type of data is area level data where there we get to see a summary or aggregate form of data like counts or rates per some unit like counties, census tracts, villages, et cetera. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, another uh, question came in that is wondering a little bit about your board of students. So what kind of job sectors they were, they were from or some of their backgrounds or um, in addition to that, the direction that their careers um, are looking to take now that they have graduated with our first graduating class? Yeah, this, this is a great question. I can start and I'm sure Tim, I'll let Tim follow up. Uh, you know, they, they come from all over the place. So we have people from CDC, we have people from um, local and state health departments, we had a sheriff, we had a fireman, we have nurses, um, you know, so they, they come from all over. And, you know, basically the, the and, and, and some of them now are actually reaching back to us, even though that they just recently graduated a, a couple of weeks ago, they're reaching out to us now for, um, to put our name down as references for different jobs that they're applying for, spatial analysis type jobs. So just, you know, in addition to where the, the varied um, disciplines from which they came from, but those are the same areas that you can go back and, and get jobs as spatial analysis. There are so many companies nowadays that that need that expertise and that skill set and um, and that's what we're hoping to uh, to provide and that's what we have been providing so far in this program Tim did you want to add to that I'm sure you might want to uh, just to add that you know there's um, a good amount of students are in a position where they're working in some kind of you know uh, public health type of uh, job and so they're trying to advance in that role or expand their role there. There's others who are uh, changing, um, like a financial analyst or a banking analyst, I guess he was, um, and he, he may be adapting, and others who, um, who have been out of the workforce, and um, a, a couple people raised some children, and now they're coming back, and they, uh, they will want to retool, and they're excited by this, uh, this branch of, you know, um, you know uh, this, this you know, area of study. So, um, it does run the gamut of people's experience and where they're starting and, and um, some are staying in the same place, others are expanding their roles and others are jumping to uh, new arenas here. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, I, I did see that a few additional questions came in regarding the scholarship and it looks like some students have joined us um, since I initially gave some details about that. Um, so just to reiterate, the scholarship that is offered is not a need-based scholarship. So if you are a qualified candidate and admitted to the program, you will automatically receive that partial scholarship. Um, this scholarship brings the tuition down to $695 per credit hour. Um, and you'll see listed on the screen here the number of credits for each the, the master's degree as well as the certificate. Uh, and again, my information is listed. I'm happy to have um, individual conversations with students on a case-by-case -case basis if they have additional questions in regards to financial aid. Um, the next program start date will be now in the fall. Uh, so right now our applications are open and they will remain open until July 1st. And that will be for students who are looking to start in the fall of 2020. 18 um, classes will start September 4th and we do have one start per year um, so there is still time to apply if you're if you're interested I see a lot of students that are asking about the um, the deadline for the application as well as the start date there is a lot there's still time to apply and in the office in my office of admissions we definitely work with students um, one by one to make sure that you are working through the application and completing on time Um, there, there was a question that came in, or two questions that came in regarding transfer credits. Um, this program at this time does not allow for transfer credits, um, but if you have previous background in, in biostatistics and epidemiology, then definitely please feel free to reach out to me to speak directly, because um, the certificate may very well be a, a wonderful opportunity for you.
Um, Dr. Carriero, um, with your background, could you share with us a little detail as far as the expectations for students with, with their quantitative background for the master's degree? Sure. So we want them to have some type of formal coursework, maybe one, two classes, undergraduate classes, possibly in, in statistics or mathematics. Um, the master's program offers two courses in biostatistics, and, and you take those courses prior to the spatial statistics course. So, um, so a lot of what's reviewed in there is what is required for the spatial statistics. But um, it always helps coming in with, with prior background. And, um, and in terms of the, the general statistics, the statistical concepts that are learned in the program, it, it's mostly focused on regression. So it's linear regression, logistic regression, and Poisson regression, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and if you have some of those prior to coming in, um, that is great. But you will get formal course, coursework in that. We just, I mean, in the applications, we want students to demonstrate their their quantitative ability that they had prior to to applying for the program. So um, so those are the things to highlight um, in the application as best you can. Perfect. And again, just to reiterate, um, there are, there are some kind of case by case questions, but I think this is kind of a, a normal trend of, of thought. If a student has an MPH already. Um, would you, you would you then advise them to look into the certificate program? Yeah, I mean, not not knowing where the MPH, MPH is from, but pretty much all M, you know masters of public health programs have courses in required courses in biostatistics and epidemiology. So I would most likely steer that student to the certificate program. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and I know there was a question about the integrative activity in the for the master's degree. Um, is there any similar course, or what is the culminating experience with the certificate and kind of to kind of bring all their skills together? Yeah, there there is no final project or or this official culminating experience that you bring in. But if you look at the curriculum, there is a course. The last course in the certificate is called spatial applications. And again, that's the same course that's in the last term of the last year of the master's program. And that course is where we give you a set of data and we give you limited guidelines. We pretty much give you the hypotheses and so forth and say, go ahead and do this. Um, and so it, it's almost like an independent project on your own, but it's independent in the sense of you're carrying out the analysis with limited instructions from us. We're hoping that you can go back and start integrating everything you learned in ArcGIS, spatial data, and spatial statistics to sort of bring all that, that together. So that's a very much on your own program. It's just not using your own data, per se. So you still will get that experience of independently analyzing data on your own, which is a, which is a crucial component of, of any program. Is, is it there's one there's one thing that to sit in class listen and understand it and do the assignments and the tests well there it, it's another whole world to go out and do it on your own and and so that fourth term class spatial applications is getting at that going out and doing it on your own part perfect well i think we have answered majority of the questions if there are any final questions um feel free to type them in now um, Dr. Carriero, Professor Shields, is there any last um, words that you'd like to leave our audience with regarding the program or the upcoming class start? Yeah, just that um, if we didn't get to anything or, or if a questions arise later today, tomorrow, or sometime in the future, you know, um, like Angelica was saying, reach out to her. And if, you know, and Angelica, I'm sure you'll agree, you're very quick to, to send them over to me, the questions. And um, especially if they're dealing with more about the, the substantive content, statistics, GIS, and so forth. And there's been plenty of opportunities where I've either just done a couple emails back and forth with prospective students or actually talked them on the phone one on one. So um, all those options are available. So uh, if there are any clarifying questions that, that you want to answer, just please reach out. And I have to thank you for being so open to always taking all the questions that we that we reach out to you from the Office of Admissions. 
um, and just being proactive in our students' process of applying. Um, so right now it seems that there's a few questions coming in, but they are a little bit more on a case-by-case -case basis um, per a student's background. So what I would encourage you to do is to please take that question, um, just send it right over to me in an email. Um, I will be back in my office um, within the next 15 minutes. If you'd like to call in, I'm happy to arrange some time for us to discuss this personally. Um, so at this time, we'll be concluding our presentation. Thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. Um, there is still time to apply for this upcoming fall cohort. Um, so please be sure to send your questions to me and I'll make sure to send over um, additional details about the program as well as the link for the application process and share some details with you there. Um, so thank you so much for joining us, Professional Shields and Dr. Carrero, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and sharing so much insight into the program. Uh, you're very welcome, thank you. Sure, our pleasure. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you.